Now we've reached the point where our date picker is functional. I mean, there's still more work we need to do to, to make it work, but it does function as a date component. We can navigate to any month we want, we can pick a date, and we can make two components independent of each other. And that's just by customizing this date picker ID override right over here. Now what I would like to do is I would like to make this interactive with my scene. Right now I can select a date, but I'm not giving that date value back to the scene. So if I wanted to do more with it, I could. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this second one. And let's take this guy. And I'm just going to move him down here a little bit. And let's now just make an input field. I'm just going to make it like a text box here. And let's center the text. I'll make the text 24 pixels. I'll give it a fill of white and a radius of, I don't know, 12. And I'll have the text in here select. I'm going to have my date picker hidden by default, but when I click on this, it's going to show my date picker. And then when I select the date, we are going to send that date back to the scene. The scene is going to receive it. And then it's going to update this text field with the value of the date formatted any way that we want. So in order to do that, first of all, I would like to make this date picker hidden by default. So I'm going to change the opacity on it to zero. And let's add a tap trigger to this tap. This is on this text one and we'll just call this date. When I tap date, then I'm going to change the opacity of my date picker component to 100. So if I preview that, there we go. That's now doing what I want. When I click on a particular date, I'd like to send that back to the scene so that way I can fill this out. Right now, my component is not sending anything back to the scene. However, if I go into the date picker component and right here where we select the day, here I can send that message to the scene. So I have a couple ways I can do that. I can choose send to scene, but I don't want to do it this way. I'm going to send it to parent. And by sending it to the parent, this makes sure that from my scene, I can listen to a particular component. We just did all that work to make our components work independently from each other. I want to make sure that I can listen independently to either of them to get whatever the selected day was. And I'm going to call this message selected date. And I'm going to send along with it. I'm going to send the selected date. And now let's go back into our scene and now I can listen for that. So I'm going to add a trigger. I'm going to go receive and I want to receive it from a component. I want to receive it from the particular date picker that I'm interested in. This is why I set it up this way. So that way, if I have multiple date pickers, I can listen to each one independently. So I'm going to say date picker and I'm going to make a variable over here and I'll call this date. And remember my date is coming through as text. So this needs to be text format receive select the date and I'm going to assign it to the variable date. And then when I receive that, I'm going to update this text box with the selected date. So text, this date field formula, and I'm going to say date. All right, let's preview this. I can do a selection and let's say I want February 28th and there we go. It's giving me that date. It's giving it to me in the standard format. And this is useful because that standard format, if we go back to all of our date functions, if we take a look here, our standard date format can be used as input for all sorts of things. So if I want to compare some dates, I want to format the date, that standard date format of four digit year dash two digit month dash two digit day can be used to do all sorts of date things. So even though my component is sending back the date in the standard format in my scene, I can format it for display. So let's say I wanted to format it with, uh, I don't know, let's go take a look at our tokens. I want to do the full name of the month. And then I want to follow it up with a single digit for a day when appropriate. And then maybe comma, whatever year that I've gotten here, I can make up whatever formatting pattern I like and use that for display. So my date variable is still going to have it in the standard format. And it's important that you keep the variable in that standard format. But for display, I'm going to format it for display. So I'm going to say format date. 
and then I give it the formatting pattern that I want. So four M's for month, so the full name of the month, capital D for the day number to one or two digits where applicable, comma, Y, 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 Y. So this will give me a four digit year. There we go. And to show that the date variable itself will remain in the standard format. Meanwhile, I'm formatting it for display. I'm going to turn the debug on for this variable. Let's go to preview and let's select the day. And I'm going to say the 20th. So notice how it's formatting February 20th, 2024, but my variable is 2024 02 20. So it's important that you keep the date in this standard format because it means you can use it for further date manipulation any way you want to do it. Like I said, if you want to format it for display, you want to do some comparison between two dates, having it in the standard format is important. Okay, well, I've selected my date and, you know, I've gone through and I've updated my selection every single time. When I'm done, I want to be able to click off and hide this. Now, I could do it. I could do it such that I select a date like this, and the second I select it, then it's going to hide it. So I could just take this, and I can paste it here and set this down to zero. Let's preview this, and let's click on it there. So let's select a date, and notice how it goes away, right? And that, uh, that's kind of doing what I want, but if I accidentally selected the 20th and I meant the 21st, I want the opportunity to fix it without having to show it again. So I'm not going to do it here. Instead, I'm going to add a trigger, a tap trigger, and this is going to be on the background. And when I tap the background, then I'm going to hide it. So I could do this, and I'll pick the 21st, and be like, oh, no, that's not the right one. I wanted the 20th. There we go. I can fix it. And now when I click back here, it hides it. And I could make it also, when I click on the date again, I could turn this into a toggle. So if it's invisible, I can show it. And if it's visible, I can hide it. So that would look like this. Let's use a condition here. If my date picker, if the opacity of it is zero, then I'm going to show it. And I will duplicate this. If the opacity is 100, if it is visible, then I'm going to hide it. So now when I preview this, and there we go. So it's, it's kind of a toggle now. And then when I select the date, I can click off and there we go. So this is the experience that I want. This is how I can make this interact with the scene. So the only thing that I've done within my component is send that date value up to the parent where I can work with it. But I've handled hiding and showing the component from within the scene. And I like doing it this way because there may be instances where I want the date picker component on the scene all the time. So I don't want it to necessarily hide. So I'm not handling that from within the component. I'm just leaving the actual selection of the date up to the component itself. And then all of the other ways that it interacts with the scene, I'm handling in the scene. Now there's another nuance to this that I'd like to handle. So let's say I click on this and then, I don't know, I go forward in time to May 2024 or I go back to April and I decide, oh no, you know what? The date I wanted was February 12th. When I click off, I haven't changed the date. Now remember the previous state of my picker was, it was on April, 2024. When I hide it, I want the ability to reset it back. So that way, when I click on it again to show it, that it's going to be defaulting on February, 2024 with that date selected. Let's add in a message that it can receive to reset itself. And this reset is going to do one of two things. If no date has been selected, then it's going to reset to the current system month and year. And if the date has been selected, then it's going to go to the selected dates month and year. Once again, I want to control this from within the scene. So for example, when I tap the background here, when I'm done hiding it, I want to reset it when the opacity reaches zero. So let's use a send message. And I'm going to send it to the component and this message, this message is going to be reset. All right. And I'm going to delay it. So that way it's after it hides over here. And similarly, I'm going to copy this and here where we're hiding, it, I'm going to put it here as well. So in both these places where I'm hiding it, I'm going to send that reset message. Let's add that reset message into our date picker component. I want to be able to receive that message. Let's just collapse this 
and so that way it doesn't make our thing like giant here. Add a trigger here, receive from parent. Remember, we're sending this message to the particular component copy, and I need to receive it from the parent. And the message is reset, should be here in the drop down. And then I need to make a decision. And this decision will be has a date been selected yet? If not, then I'm just going to reset it to the system month and year like we have here. So let's set this condition to be if selected date equals nothing. And I'm just going to leave this blank. If selected date equals nothing, then let's copy this, paste it here, and let's say no selected date. And here, let's copy this right here because this helps to have this in here as well. And I will send that generate month. Then I want the inverse of this. So I'm going to duplicate this condition. And if it doesn't equals nothing, so a date has been selected, then I'm going to default this to selected dates, month, and year. And instead of month on date now, I'm going to use month on selected date. I'm going to copy this, say OK to this. If this is showing up as an error to you, fear not. This is a current bug with Studio where it flags these. When you use a variable in the month and year functions, it's showing this as an error. But fear not, this will work. It'll just show up as an error here in your triggers list. Same thing, I want to do it here. So we're going to get rid of date now. Instead, I'm going to put in selected date. And like I say, it will show up as an error, but trust me, this is going to work. And I'll prove it to you. Let's go back into our scene. And let's preview this. And I'm going to go ahead, not select the date yet. And I'm going to click on here. And if I click on this again, notice how it's gone back to my system month and year. And then let's now choose a date. So I'm going to choose July 12, 2023. And let's click off there. And if I click on it again, I should see that. And now let's go forward in time a bunch of months. But I'm not going to select a date. If I click off here and then click on it again, notice how it comes back to July 12, 2023. So this is a couple ways that you can make it interact with your scene. You can have your component send messages up to the parent that you can listen for. So for example, when I receive this selected date message from the component itself, and then you can send messages to it. So I've set up my component to receive this message reset, which now will reset my date picker back to the either the current selection or the current system month and year.